Well, good weekend, all. I Rapstein, and here we are with your Metal Market Wrap-Up, and this wrap-up is for the weekend of Friday, the 16th of June, 2023. Now, I want to wish all the dads out there a very, very happy Father's Day. I am one of them. Um, and I also want to uh, take the time out to remember, for you to remember that you have a funny market taking place this week because you have the Juneteenth holiday. And that means that we have the abbreviated trading sessions for Sunday night. Some markets open, some don't. You go into Monday morning. They have different closing times. They're before noon. Then certain markets will reopen at 5 p.m. on Monday. And everything gets back to business on Tuesday. So understand that. Um, I am not going to publish on Monday morning any of my normal updates for you. We'll resume on Tuesday for that, but this is your weekend update. So when we do the weekend, we're looking at the longer term charts. Now, one of the things I'm starting to do, and I began on it uh, already, is now on my weekly subscriber videos, I am tracking weekly trades because they have been, I should have been doing it for a while. It's, it's harder for me to track everything like I am. Now, when I say track, let me explain it. If in my video, I say buy here or sell there and it gets filled. I keep up with that in a spreadsheet for you to see. And when it's closed out, it's closed out. I don't do a cumulative record. I'm not a commodity trading advisor. I don't want to manage your money. Not what I do. I sell my advisory service. That's where it comes and goes. And I'm not interested in a track record. I'm comfortable with the way I do it. Um, and otherwise, I have to go to the government, register. I don't want to do all this, folks. It, it, I, since I don't want to manage your money, I never come out and say, buy here with me, you'll make millions of dollars. I, I've never said you buy here, you're going to lose millions. It's all balanced, all right? Uh, but I do want to track those weekly trades while I have them open for what I say buy or sell. It is not for the public. It's only for the people that are in my subscriber list. And you can, by the way, watch these and see that if you're watching me on YouTube, just go to the bottom right. You will see a blue line. Give it a click and join us. If you go to our website, you can join there by going to irapstein.com under the word research and pick which programs you want to follow. It's very, very simple to do and very, very easy. Okay. So I wanted to bring you up to date, and I think that's super, super important to do so. So now let's get ourselves going with what's going on. You know we've had uh, mania buying in the stock market, a melt up in many of the individual stocks. There's seven to 10 stocks that have carried the stock market sharply higher. A lot of the stocks have done nothing. There are heroes, there are villains. That's just how it works. Did the market uh, take off and blast off? It did. Did it impact the markets here? It did. Did the gold market have what I call a washout yesterday with a huge drop down? Because if you go through these FOMC meetings, you're walking into harm's way. You don't know what's going to be said, let alone how the market will react. It's a two prong event. Let me explain the two prongs to it. The Fed comes out on Wednesday, makes its announcement. But in Asia, they're sleeping when that's happening. And the Europeans, while well, it's 6 o'clock at night, 7 o'clock at night, depending where, they're out to dinner, they're with their family. The last thing they're doing is sitting at a screen trying to trade this market. Asia wakes, they react one way. Um, uh, Europe wakes, they look at what Asia's done, what America did the day before, or currently doing in the market, because we trade almost 24 hours here. They react. By the time you wake up, after, and you watch the phenomena, you'll see it's about six in the morning. Market starts acting different towards seven. I'm talking central time. That's when events start happening. It's, it's, it's as traders wake. People don't trade 24 hours a day. They sleep. That simple. I've been saying that for years. I was on the floors. I know how it is. Uh, I've worked trade desks. It's not how it works. All right. So. The market came down, got hit. Now the big question is, traders are saying the Fed will never get the two interest rates through that they're talking of doing, that it's been done. The pause was the same as quitting. Those are the naysayers. You hear it all the time. And folks, they have been right in one sense, buying the brakes. They have not been right 
in their call of what the Fed has done. If you think that's the case, you are the one wrong, okay? The Fed has been doing this for 14 months. This is the first pause. The naysayers said they would never do this, never do that. They wouldn't get to these rates. They're done. It's one and done. It hasn't been right. Where they've been right is the impact on the economy hasn't been terrible. We keep hearing that the recession is coming. I haven't seen it, have you? It is almost the same thing as the lag effect going to come and kick in, and it's why the Fed keeps having to raise rates, because that hasn't come either. It's almost like we keep hearing the calls, the earnings are gonna be terrible and these companies don't buy them. That hasn't happened either, okay? So, be careful with what you listen to. Trade the chart, not what you think. Trade the chart, not what you think. Gold, no matter what, is over the 18-week average, and until it gets under 1845.50, my definition of bias is when you're over that, you should have a bullish bias to your trade. When you're under it, a bearish bias. I have found this to really keep you in good steed. I then look at a weekly close of prices on charts, and I use the same principle. Now, I had marked here the old high way back here. And folks, we probably did this four months ago or more. I, I didn't look it up. It's probably that much at least. Look at how well that worked out. And I said, you know, we're at a zone, that old high, where you got to prove you can really do something from there. You didn't. You fell back into a support zone. Now, when we come and we look at the weekly bar, you can see it right through here, and you put the swing lines on, you're in a downtrend. You have lower highs and a lower low. This week's low was 1926. Even if you take out last week's high, you can break the downtrend, you can't get a buy signal out of it. You would have a lower low, higher high. You would end the swing to the downside, but that's all you can do. Where's the market fighting the battle? You will see me if you're a regular viewer, and I pray you are. Talk to you over and over how important the red lines you'll see on the chart are. On the weeklies, they're the 18-week average of closes. On the dailies, they're the 18-day. You'll say, Ira, why not the 20 or 21? Why not? I've answered your question. Whatever you think you're comfortable with. I'm comfortable with this. I've done this for years. I've tried 21s, 20s, 18s, different numbers. Bought services that were supposed to come out and tell me this is the right one. Our back testing shows. It's a bunch of nonsense, a bunch of throwing money out the window. I have found this works for me, and that's where I want to stay. Does it really matter if your number's slightly different? The only time it matters is in slow stochastics. My version is different than yours. By the way, if you like mine, if you have trading view, you can get it. Otherwise, you can use our charting software products, and it's in there. Uh, and all you need to do is go to our website under charting software, and you'll see trading view. That's where you buy your suite. We take it from there, not you. We take it. We'll send you an email. We activate it, and it works for you there. Okay. So as I look at the chart action here on the weekly, lower highs, lower lows, I can see what would negate the downtrend. Nothing sets up a buy signal. But the market is staying over the 18-week average. It's not saying to go short. When I come in and I look at Bollinger Bands, the resistance of that worked perfect. You heard me say over and over, you never buy over a Bollinger Band. That's where the pros take money off the table, especially if you're overbought and not embedded. I'm going to go back with what I said. That worked like a charm. And here's the market trying to make a decision, and it hasn't. When I look at the gold-silver ratio, the lower this number goes, it means that I need less and less ounces, ounces, plural, to buy one ounce of gold. So right now I need 81.17. If it went to 75, I need only 75. So I have my shopping cart, I fill it up, I go to my local gold-silver coin or whatever dealer. He's in a shopping mart probably, waiting there, smoking away for me to come in. And I'm going to give him my 81.17 ounces. He's going to say, Ira, you're such a good guy. I'm not going to charge you a commission. Here's your ounce of gold. That's the gold-silver ratio. When I look at silver, silver definitely could be a buy. You have lower highs, lower lows into the 18-day average, so the bias is up. If the market gets up and over 
2462 on a weekly basis. The market is a buy at that point, is, and then the risk would be getting back under this low, and you'd be looking to see, can you get up to the Bollinger Band? Conversely, if the market breaks down and settles under the 18-week average because it's already in a downtrend with the lower high and lower low, then you're looking to get into these numbers. Got it? That's the way that I'm looking at the chart. This isn't a trade recommendation explaining how I'd be analyzing it. In the copper market, copper on the daily chart went into a vertical move because the whole world is waiting for China to do a stimulus package. But what stimulus package is the question? Uh, Anthony Blinken went there today. I don't know the result of what he got done with the Chinese, but the fact that they didn't throw him out of the country is probably a good sign. He's not going to do a breakthrough. It's called a thaw. That's all that you can expect. We have to start talking to the second largest economy in the world. This is no good that it's constant threats, constant threats. That does not mean a thaw that you take down your barriers and you, you don't sell them technology, that you don't do other things. That's the, that's the dancing act. You're trying to say, let's not get crazy with each other, but no, we're not going to give you this. We're not going to give you that. We're not going to help you promoting that you're going to be the number one. We're, and we're not going to keep saying we're number one. That is such a hard game to go with. Very hard. Very different agendas in the countries. Okay, But as Henry Kissinger said, and he's right, and he's old, and I realize it, but he's really smart. <laughs> Embrace them. You can't do this. You don't need to go to war with them. That's not Russia. This is a whole different game. Um, you can see the issue. You're back up to the resistance point. There's nothing bullish on this chart. Nothing. You were oversold and you got a bounce. You hit the spot where I think the pros began taking profit right here. The first challenge of a 200-week average has proven to be that's where professionals step away to see what's going to happen. It happened there, and now you're up. What are the pros doing? I wouldn't be surprised if they did some light selling. It just wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, the last rally high was all the way what up here. It, uh, is, I think that number is 398.30. We'll see if we can get through that. In the platinum, you're bearish. Now, I have been espousing the problems platinum has and palladium. Car after car manufacturers moving to electric. You don't need that material for it. That doesn't mean you're not using that today. I mean, we're selling how many internal combustion engines compared to an electric one right now. But each day that there's an electric car built, that's one less combustion engine car that you need because somebody buys it and they're never going back, most likely, to that old combustion engine. And that takes away this. Just remember that. It, it, you're looking at, at a very important shift in the usage. In the dollar, there is no trend. And I know you want to tell me there is one. There isn't. You have a higher high, lower low, and it's been this way for a while. You broke the downtrend when you cleared the high right here over here. And now the market's looking for the trend. That's the way that I have to view what that market is doing. And there's my news, and we're back right where we were. So it's an interesting time. But my breakthrough happened today. Sitting here and watching F1 racing in the afternoon. I love, you know, I'm a freak with it. And I no, I don't want to go because you don't really see the race. I mean, it's fun to go. I've been to races. And it's fun to go and you meet people. If you can get into the paddock, it's just absolutely phenomenal. But then after you go into the grandstand, you see a turn. It's so much better on TV. I know you don't believe me. It is worth the experience to go if you've never done it. It's worth the experience if you love large crowds. Uh, they're, they're great people. There's a lot of memorabilia to buy. I've done that. I'm older now. I don't need all that. But I do love the sport. And we're having NASCAR in Chicago in three weeks, two weeks. So you should see the stands they're building. They've shut off Lakeshore Drive. I mean chaos in the city. We've never done this, so it's going to be interesting for NASCAR. Okay, but you hear me talk about all this uh, different technical indicators and how to think about them. Well, we have our volume guides with our good friends at Futures Magazine put this together, and it talks about the different type of charts, the patterns. You can print all this out and keep it on your desk, how to work with different trend lines. 
simple moving average, exponential, which one do you do, use? Oscillators, relative strength, MACD, slow stochastic. What do spreads tell you about the market? Today I was discussing uh, Fibonacci numbers in hogs, of all things, uh, in one of my updates. So you go with it, you try to come up with something that makes sense, and it's yours for free. You print it right out. We send it to you as a PDF. You just go to our website under free offer, sign up. You can move your cursor up here, give it a click, take care of it from there. And with that, I'm I reps. And as I said, I was thinking this week, especially today, and what came to my mind is stop thinking about the market. Just concentrate on the chart, take the name off it, and go back to what you do best, Ira. Light went on. I'm Ira. You have a great weekend. I will see you all come Tuesday morning. Take care.